In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. On this Lenten day and on this first anniversary of the death of Archbishop John Bathersby, we stand in the light of Easter and we give thanks for the life and even the death of John and we pray that beyond the darkness of death he will enter the fullness of life which he embodied and which he proclaimed through his life. We come to Christ as he did and as he, as he does and we come as those who have sinned. And in the name of Christ, who is all mercy, I welcome all of you to this Mass, but particularly members of the Bathersby family who have joined us, and also the bishops of Queensland, who providentially are in Brisbane for a meeting, but who join us today in this moment of thanksgiving and prayer for our brother John. As we enter the sacred mysteries, let's acknowledge our sins and acclaim the mercy of Christ. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the soul of your departed servant, Archbishop John, to whom you committed the care of this, your family, may, with the abundant fruit of his labours, enter into the eternal joy of his Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Daniel. Azariah stood in the heart of the fire and he began to pray. Oh, do not abandon us forever for the sake of your name. Do not repudiate your covenant. Do not withdraw your favor from us for the sake of Abraham, your friend, of Isaac, your servant, and of Israel, your holy one, to whom you promised descendants as countless as the stars of heaven and as the grains of sand on the seashore. Lord, now we are the least of all the nations. Now we are despised throughout the world today because of our sins. We have at this time no healer, no prophet, no prince, no holocaust, no sacrifice, no oblation, no incense, no place where we can offer you the first fruits and win your favor. But may the contrite soul, the humble spirit, be acceptable to you as holocausts of rams and bullocks, as thousands of flattened, fattened lamb. Such let our sacrifice be to you today. And may it be your will that we follow you wholeheartedly, since those who put their trust in you will not be disappointed. And now we put our whole heart into following you, into fearing you, and seeking your face once more. Do not disappoint us. Treat us gently, as you yourself are gentle and very merciful. Grant us deliverance worthy of your wonderful deeds. Let your name win glory, Lord. The word of the Lord. My 
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. To you, o Lord. Peter went up to Jesus and said, Lord, how often must I forgive my brother if he wrongs me? As often as seven times? Jesus answered, Not seven, I tell you, but seventy seven times. And so the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who decided to settle his accounts with his servants. When the reckoning began, they brought him a man who owed 10,000 talents, but he had no means of paying. So his master gave orders that he should be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, to meet the debt. At this, The servant threw himself down at his master's feet. Give me time, he said, and I will pay the whole sum. And the servant's master felt so sorry for him that he let him go and cancelled the debt. Now as this servant went out, he happened to meet a fellow servant who owed him 100 denarii. And he seized him by the throat and began to throttle him. Pay what you owe me, he said. 
his fellow servant fell at his feet and implored him, saying, Give me time, and I will pay you. But the other would not agree. On the contrary, he had him thrown into prison till he should pay the debt. His fellow servants were deeply distressed when they saw what had happened, and they went to their master and reported the whole affair to him. Then the master sent for him. You wicked servant, he said, I cancelled all that debt of yours when you appealed to me. Were you not bound then to have pity on your fellow servant just as I had pity on you? And in his anger, the master handed him over to the torturers till he should pay all his debt. And that is how my heavenly father will deal with you unless you each forgive your brother from heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the Song of Songs, it is said that love is as strong as death. But in the light of Easter, we go further than the song, because we say, in fact, by gathering in a moment like this, that love is, in fact, stronger than death. It is the only power stronger than the power of death, which seems to claim us all as a kind of final word. But the last word belongs not to death, but to life, because the last word belongs to the love that does not die when we lay the body of John Bathersby in the vault of this cathedral as we did almost 12 months ago. He is dead, but our love for him is not. And that's why on this first anniversary, we gather to remember an unforgettable human being who also happened to be the Archbishop of Brisbane. At the very heart of that love, there lies the mystery that John enshrined in his Episcopal motto, which was the two simple Latin words, lex crucis, the law of the cross. And the law of the cross is the law of an infinite love that surpasses both death and the sin of which death is the ultimate fruit. So this is a moment when we are immersed in the law of the cross. We stand beneath the cross of Christ and we celebrate his sacrifice at this altar, the sacrifice of the cross to proclaim that there is in the end only one law, and that is the law of the cross, which means life out of death. At the heart of this love, the epicenter of which is the cross of Jesus Christ, there is the forgiveness of which Jesus has spoken so unforgettably in the gospel that we have just heard. In other words, just as love is greater than death, so too there is a forgiveness that is greater than any sin, a forgiveness that is greater than all sin. And it's that forgiveness that lies at the heart of the mystery of the cross, which was the very heart of the life and death of John Bathersby. This forgiveness that is stronger than sin means giving forgiveness and receiving it endlessly. And as we look to John and the witness that he gave, the witness of the forgiveness which is love, which is the cross, we see in him one who, in the words of the prophet Daniel, sought to follow the Lord wholeheartedly. 
The prophet says, now we put our whole heart into following you. And that was true of John Bathersby. He may not have always succeeded, but he did seek to put his whole heart into the following of Jesus. He was a man who, again in the words of the prophet Daniel, put his trust in you, put his trust in God. Always a risky business, but he took the risk and the risk paid off. And to that extent, he became what the prophet calls a friend of God, a friend to many of us, certainly to me, a great and decisive friend in my own life, but friend to many of us, but in the end, a friend of God, which is one of the great titles given to Abraham in the Bible, the friend of God. So John Bathersby, insofar as he was, a friend of God was a true son of Abraham who knew what it was to put his trust in God against all the odds. Therefore, here today, we not only remember this memorable man and bishop, but we pray for him in this cathedral that was his. And our prayer is simple and deep. In the words again of the prophet Daniel, our prayer is that John, beyond death, will not be disappointed. Those who put their trust in you will not be disappointed. So that we pray that John will know not disappointment, but a magnificent and barely imaginable fulfillment. That he will find that fulfillment in the God who is gentle and very merciful, as Daniel says. John knew that in the depths of his heart through life, and our prayer is this, morning, this afternoon that he now know the fullness of that gentleness and the fullness of that mercy. So this is the prayer that rises from the heart of the fire, the fire of mortality, that stands all around us as we celebrate life, the fires of death that become the fire of life. And so we say, eternal rest give to John, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. We have heard the words of life that come from the mouth of God and we speak our own words of prayer, trusting that there is a life that is bigger than death. That those who find it difficult to forgive may discover in Christ's teaching and example the help they need to be reconciled. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who find themselves in situations where they have no leader, no priest or prophet, may through sincere prayer discover the Christ who is always present to them. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That politicians will speak and act in ways that are respectful of the dignity of all. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that we will hold up to God in prayer all who suffer because they believe in Jesus Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. On this first anniversary of Archbishop John Bathersby, that we continue to be grateful for his ministry among us and that he may rest peacefully in God's light and truth. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. You, Lord God, are gentle and very merciful. Listen to the prayers that we make for our brother John and for the world and answer us. For the sake of Jesus, your Son, who is the Lord of life and death for ever and ever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We humbly beseech your boundless mercy, Lord, that this sacrifice, which your departed servant, Archbishop John, while in the body offered to you for the salvation of the faithful, may now bring him your pardon and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Up the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ your Son. For as one alone he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying. 
as one man he chose to die, so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so in the company of the choirs of angels we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Mark, our Bishop, my brother bishops here present, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, John, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life 
and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be in you.
Let us pray. May your merciful kindness, which we have implored, O Lord, embrace the soul of our departed brother, Archbishop John, that by these sacrificial gifts he may know the eternal company of Christ in whom he hoped and whom he preached, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Just recently, and with an eye to this first anniversary of Archbishop John, we have refurbished in the cathedral the funerary space, by which I mean the vault where the bodies of the former bishops lie, and also on the pavement and the wall. You'll notice that the vault itself has a more embellished cover, simple but effective, I think, the design. And then we have um, placed the plaque, the memorial plaque for Archbishop John, and we have rearranged the other plaques and, and also given them a different background and we have embellished the cross that was on the wall. So we will now, on this first anniversary, we will bless these newly refurbished arrangements for the funerary space of the bishops. Blessed be the Lord, our God. For righteousness and lead us to the dwellings of the saints. Blessed is the Lord, our God. We praise you, our refuge and strength. We bless you, our God and Redeemer. Your praise is always in our hearts and on our lips. We remember the mighty deeds of the covenant. Blessed is the Lord our God. God of the living and of the dead, bless this resting place, placed beneath the sign of the cross. May the bodies of our brothers and bishops, James, Robert, James, Patrick, Francis, and John, and those who will follow, sleep in your peace, to rise immortal at the coming of your Son.
May this place be a comfort to the living, a sign of their hope for unending life. May prayers be offered here unceasingly in supplication for those who sleep in Christ and in constant praise of your mercy through Christ our Lord. peace of God which is beyond all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. To God.